When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. One thousand and forty-eight lakes, the panfish capital of Minnesota, Ottertail County. Over the next four days, our crew will be exploring and experiencing the rich waters of the most infamous county in the state of Minnesota. The goal is simple, chase down the biggest crappies possible in the early ice window. Our hearts still belong in the metro, and we will be back, but we needed to take a vacation. So come join the party. First Ice is here. We are in Otter Tail County. Otter Tail County is unique crappies that are just absolutely built to the max. You'll notice that a lot of the fish are heavy, like for how long they are. 1,048 lakes. You can keep jumping. If one's not good, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one, and eventually you're going to run into something that's pretty epic. Oh my god, that's a good one, today. Eh? Oh, oh yeah. look at the height. <laughs> Give me some, look at that, double bombs. <laughs> get ready, boys. Get ready, get a rod ready. Somebody get a rod ready. Dude, that is a giant! Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> Look at that thing! Minnesota as a whole, there's a lot of 14 inch class fish caught every year and it's super exciting to catch a fish like that, but to catch a fish that you literally pull out of the hole and don't even know what it is, you know, you're looking at it, I want a crappie that's going to scare me. We got her, Bart. We got her, buddy. That's a giant. What is up? Okay. I think we are all here. Yeah, there's pain. <laughs> okay. Um, if everybody can hear us, it would be great if we could get a comment or two saying people can hear us. Yes. Hello, hello. But other than that, I guess we'll wait for some comments to roll in. Um, we'll be doing a couple giveaways tonight. Uh, we'll kind of remind people throughout the whole time. Um, I have a, I need to make sure I grab the right one. I have a Griff's Chronicle right here. <laughs> Fully rigged. It's got a drop XL on it. Three pound line. An elite spooler. I'm gonna give that away. As well as there's a 
and over in this corner is a pile of clam jigs. So um, as long as people are commenting questions, you will be eligible. And then, uh, yeah, if you can go share this on Facebook and uh, yeah, share it to Instagram links, stuff like that on YouTube, um, that would be great. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So as we get going, yeah, Waldo, mic check. Yo. Yeah, oh, it worked, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, okay. Um, Waldo and Griff, do you guys want to share this on yours? Uh, just the the Facebook one? or the Yeah, YouTube? yeah, just pop on and share it quick. All right, guys. You need um, so we'll kind of just start getting into this right now. So, um, number one, we'll need a bunch of questions tonight because uh, – yeah, that's why we're chatting with you. We're here to answer questions. Um, we got a bunch of different sales and announcements going on as well. And then um, just a little update for everyone. One of the big reasons for the live stream right now is the bite has been quite poor everywhere. So um, we just don't really want to put out any episode that we're not fully proud of. And uh, with the Frankies this weekend and uh, other sort of stuff going on, we figured it was a good time to just do a live stream instead. So, um, yeah, first thing we are going to do is uh, we're going to have a little announcement from one of our sponsors. Griff, do you have your shades? Yep, there they are. Okay, so these are the new hard water lenses from Relevant. We're going to have Waldo and Griff talk about these because they're the ones that know most about them because they have been testing them and wearing them. Um, but with that said... Let me see if I can make this work. All right. I did. Make it. <laughs> Exciting. Did you see that? that sick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so with uh, this relevant stuff, Griff, you want to talk about these lenses? We're going to be, there's going to be a sale going on now. Um, we have a code right here that you can use for relevant shades, um, any of them. But first, we're going to have Griff talk about the hard water lenses and Waldo. Uh, so the hard water lenses are made specifically for ice fishing. Um, I mean, you could wear them in the summer, but you know, they're designed for ice fishing, I should say. But what they do is they kind of knock down the white light, you know, from the reflection of the sun for, off the snow. Um, it reduces eye strain. And then, uh, it actually, when you look at your graph, you can see your, your, uh, graph a lot. It's almost like HD a little bit. It kind of just gets rid of the clutter on the outside of the um marks waldo what do you what do you gotta add uh so the hard water lenses the the whole main purpose of them is they deflect the white light um i do have the actual technical side of it from adam winkleman it confused me so it's probably going to confuse you <laughs> uh let's see here science it's the best so here's the technical term for it uh it by reflecting colors on both spectrums of the electromagnetic spectrum we are i don't even know how to say that word reducing the intensity of the reflection of the color white quote unquote snow uh that results in a very very comfortable visual experience when in either super bright or uh very white colors are apparent um so that's uh that's straight from the source right there but uh yeah they've been super impressive we've been happy with them griffs i mean they haven't left your head <laughs> so no. yeah i'm pumped okay so um yeah so with that and oh god i gotta find my way through this again Okay, so with uh, all the relevant stuff, you can get any pair of relevant shades until February um, 27th, I believe it'll be, uh, for 20% off. So whether it's the hard water lenses um, or any of the other lenses we've been wearing all year, you can get them using this code, and there is a bunch of information uh, in the description about everything. All right, now we are going to go hop on with a couple questions quick so that we can keep up to them. Um, <clears throat> I need to get this off of here and we'll flash that up a few different times. 
Oh, also, just like last time, um, we are doing a merch sale again. So for the live stream, if you use or spend sixty dollars, use code live stream at checkout. After you have sixty dollars worth of stuff, you get a free hat. Then put your hat in the cart; it'll just completely discount it. So that's how you use it. There was a little bit of confusion last time with that. Okay. First question of the night was, what kind of GoPro would you recommend for someone who is just starting out? Not mine. Um, GoPro 4s are really good, um, and they're very cheap. If you can find them on eBay and stuff, they just I don't think they make them anymore. No, they? they're discontinued, so they can be difficult to find, but when you do find them, they're pretty inexpensive. Like I don't know, most of them are right around 100 bucks. You might find a used one for a little bit less even. Yeah, so those are really good. Otherwise, if you're looking at another GoPro, you want to get a newer one. Um, the 9s are really good. We use a lot of GoPro 9s. The batteries last really long. You can film a bunch of different stuff with them. And, um, yeah, they're they're just really good, uh, really good GoPros. And they last a very long time with battery. Yeah. And the audio is actually good. Yeah, probably the only Point thing. the 7s. Sevens are pretty good too. Yes. The only thing you're buying up extra if you go from like I think a seven or newer is you get that hyper smooth, so it takes all the camera shake out of it, which is kind of worth it, but you don't need it. Okay. Oh yeah, all the hello. Uh, all right, Waldo. Here's one for you. Tika versus Pinhead, which is better? Oh. Uh, that's hard. I would say probably pinhead, but I'm just kind of getting the Tika minnow thing down. So I don't know what I like more. They're both super fun, aggressive baits to, to fish. It's pretty much, I mean, they're both really good baits. You just kind of have to see what one they're biting on. So I enjoy the Tika minnow because I like that snap rip style of fishing. Um, but you can do it with a pinhead too. So I don't know. They're both really good baits. It'd be hard for me to choose, I guess. And I think Griff's reply is going to be Pinhead Minnow, correct? You know my answer. Yeah. Pinhead Minnow. Yeah, I just started playing around with that Tika. So I have a lot to learn with it, but so far so good. It is sick when they're eating that, though. They they do eat it pretty good. Yeah, it's dope. Um, what brand is the yellow bump board? It's a catch, right, Waldo? Catch bump yep. board? Yep, catch 26-inch. They have 16, 26 and I believe uh, 36 as well. Um, they are, uh, it's just a pretty much a stetched plastic bump board. Uh, so everything is laser etched in it. So you know it's 100% accurate because it's computer etched. Uh, but yeah, they're, they've been really nice. I know, I mean, I think we've all enjoyed using those this year. Yeah, no, it's been great. Yeah. Um... Have you found a good night bite? Yes. The next episode, actually, that you will see, we found a pretty good night bite. Um, so there will be some night footage, finally. I haven't looked through it yet to see how grainy and bad it might be, but we caught a lot of fish. Yeah. They were very, very particular, too. It was really annoying. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, when using a pinhead, do you use bait or bear hook? It's no bait for the most part. No bait. No. No bait, for sure. Uh, Griff, Waldo, if you guys want to talk about go to for tight lip fish, Griff, you want to go first? Sure, I mean, I would go as a drop kick, um, and just change your plastics around based on their attitude. Um, a lot of times when the bite, when those fish don't want to bite, the harder you jig it, the, the harder they'll hit it. So yeah, um, a lot of times you can just get them to react, like even th though they don't want to. But I think you kind of annoy them with uh, that super hard jigging cadence, and you're just pounding it in their face. Like we were actually doing that today out on Tonka, and you would hit it like we were long rodding, but you would uh, you would pound the end of the rod super hard, and they, the whole rod would just double over when they when they bit it. So, yeah. but they weren't super aggressive, you know. Just kind of made them aggressive. Yeah. And I kind of go the opposite route. I shrink down, use fluorocarbon, three millimeter jigs, and either finesse plastic or wax worms or your larva. So, I mean, it kind of depends, really. You can either get a reaction out of them or you can coax them into eating. 
there's kind of two ways to do it. You just got to feel it out. Yeah, totally. Okay, one more question, then we'll hop to a few other things here. Um, have a deep basin bite every morning. Where would you start looking once they vanish for the day? I would Grim go shallow, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, oh, geez, good one. A lot of times, what I've noticed with those basin fish is there's some that stay out in the basin all day. You know, there's fish that are specifically basin fish. But then there's ones that slide up into the weeds. Uh, and a lot of times you can figure out what depth they slide up into the weeds by or where they're going to go to by how far they're down when you're fishing them over the basin. So if they're 12 feet down, I go to 12 feet of water and start looking because they just slide straight in. They don't change depth as they're moving in. They just go in. So if they're at 12 feet, which means in the daytime they were in 12 feet up there and they just slid their way back up. Mm -hmm. so the other basin fish that just stay out there they're obviously going to be in the basin they're just going to roam all over the place but those ones that slide up in the weeds they'll usually slide up into the depth that they're actually suspended at yeah and those ones are usually pretty close to that shallow water too so they can easily just go back right. and forth between the two but yeah i would do the same thing griff did i just go to the nearest shallow water at that same depth and start checking up there because normally it's a feeding window type deal. Well, right. in daytime, we like to use those weeds, you know, too. Yeah. Okay, so last one. This one just popped up real quick. I saw. Um, what frame for the relevance do you guys prefer, Waldo Griff? I've got um, fat heads, so I use Navigators. Yeah, I have the Rangers and the Titans, but I my favorite so far has been the Rangers. If you like a bigger lens... Matter. If you like a bigger lens, like a Brandon Polinick kind of size glasses, that's going to be your Titan. And the, so, the Titan one's definitely the widest one they got, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Navigators and then the Titans are new this year. They just launched them. Those are. Well, oh, and they just, came, they just came out with the Maverick too, which is kind yeah. of a. Those are brand spanking. That's, you know. that's a. That's like a. I would say it's between the Ranger and the Titan. It's yeah. kind of a mid range from what I've seen. I haven't got to see them yet, but no. I would say for what they are, they're a mid range between the Titan and the Ranger. The Titan ones are sick. I've been using those all winter. Yep. Yeah. Well, you got a fat head, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um now we're gonna move into just we got we got a special guest here and a little bit of a special announcement he's gonna help us out with. Um and Waldo and Griff aren't here, so they have no clue what's about we to happen. No we'll add them to the stream. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, hello? Oh, guy. Hello? Uh, would you say we're rolling? Hello? Absolutely. Am I, am I clear? Do I look good? <laughs> no. Hello? Okay, we have audio, we have visual. Yeah, we are good. We got you here, Sobe. Crappy Chronicle, fellows. It's good to What's see up, you. What's up, buddy? Good to hey, see you, too. First of all, one thing we need to clear up, Sobe. <clears throat> there was a tournament that went down, and um, you registered fish early on in the tournament, and then suddenly we, we registered some 14s and a 15. You somehow oh. disappeared. Would you like to uh, discuss what happened on said set set date, said weekend? So it's we're doing the clam trap attack tournament, right? <laughs> yeah, allegedly. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly. And um, – I'm on a grinder, right? A late night grinder. The tournament starts on Saturday. I I started fishing at 12.05. Because I wasn't even going to fish before that. Why? Why? You know what I mean? Why catch a bomb before that? 12.20 rolls around. Fat 14 and a half inch crappie. Mind you, it's 12.40. Um, and I literally rolled out of bed 30 minutes prior. Cause I was like, whatever, I'll just catch a quick Z before that. I was so pumped, so excited, literally registered kind of falsely registered a 14 and a half inch fish. <laughs> I got a video of it. Like here it is on a bump board. I told you it's a good one. And then <laughs> that's like all I submitted. And I you forgot you had to do a selfie. Except to what was required. <laughs> yeah. You did everything. <laughs> you like, here it is. Yeah. It's cause he ate it. 
<laughs> I literally did that. I hit it and then I hit submit and I was like, oh, it did it. Okay, we're good. <laughs> and I released it. So oh my yeah, God. that's how that went down. That was a cool tournament though. I'd like to do more online tournaments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was a good time. We had a good time that day. That first day, you were sla slamming us, and me and Waldo were the only ones out. We're looking at each other like, dude, we need to register something. We're getting dusted right now. <laughs> I think a young guy actually won the whole tournament, right? Like the whole. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. Maybe 16, 17 year old guy. He was. That, that was sick, uh, though, because you could like see when people were catching, too. Like it was just yeah. updating, like, oh my God, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, before we go any farther, I asked a question in the comments, and it was it was if you're stranded on a desert island, you're going for panfish, you can bring two jigs. What are they? And then you can just bring two colors. What do you do? I'll go first. Sure. I would do a drop kick, a white one, and a black one. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would bring a drop kick, a black one. And then a pinhead minnow, Ooh. a white and glitter one. Would you consider a pinhead minnow a jig? I mean, it's it's a spoon ish. I mean, spoon, right? yeah, it's a jigging spoon. <laughs> it's a jigging spoon. <laughs> there you go. If it did, if it wasn't a jig, I'd. If you didn't consider that a jig, <laughs> I would go drop XL then. How about you, Uncle Griff? What would you bring? Uh, drop kick in. The black, and then a. If it's just jig, I do the drop XL. Nice. And that one, I would do the uh, like the pink lemonade color. Ooh, okay. That one's nice. How would it you? Glows. You gotta have. You gotta have a night option. Or just go home. <laughs> well, that too. You could do that. How about you, Waldo? Uh, I would do a half ant. Ooh. The white and red one. With Thank the God. red eye. Um, and then I would do uh, probably a drop kick. Drop kick's just such a hard jig to beat. Yeah. And then colors for the drop kick, I would probably do the black drop kick with the yellow nose to it. Do you love drop kicks? I mean, you guys talk about them all the time. Is it just because it, it kind of has like a harder kick when you pound yeah, it? Yeah, it, it bucks. It bucks and it kind of moves around like this a lot more than just a regular drop tungsten does. Sure. Well, if you if you watch fish or sorry, fit uh, bugs in the water column, in the camera, they're doing that same motion. So like yeah, you're darting. you're basically it does that motion for you when you jig it. So you're basically imitating. Not many jigs actually pump like that, like a bug does. What is what does the duck bill look like underwater? The duck bill jig because it's kind of like it has a flat presentation with the. It kind of does the same thing, but it's more of a rocking action than a like kicking. Bucking. You know what I mean? It kind of does this. Sure. Not this. You know what I mean? Okay. Like it kind of rocks the whole bait, rocks back and forth because of its the shape of it. You know. Okay. Well, enough about jigs, Adam. Continue. Okay. Should we? Should we yeah, yeah. So first of all, I'll go into a little bit of backstory, then you can take over, Sobe. Yeah. Um, so Sobe's here for a reason, and um, I'll lead into that. So this weekend, obviously, we were filming, and um, we were out filming in – we are in, like, downtown St. Paul, basically. Um, and we were filming. We were out on the lake for a long time that day. And um, – while we were out there, we actually heard two car alarms go off, and we were like, oh, someone doesn't know how to work their keys. Um, <laughs> and when we got back into the ramp, let me see if I can find this. Okay, when we got back into the ramp, Waldo and Pinkala's windows were smashed on their trucks, as you can see from said pictures. Um, so some of you people might recognize that ramp. I mean, we're not hiding any spots or anything, but I also wouldn't recommend going there because there's been a, been a lot of thefts lately. And um, unfortunately, the people who dug in, they, their trucks were the only ones hit, and we're pretty sure it's because uh, there was no one parked next to them. That's basically it. All the other spots were completely taken. Uh, we had everything hidden in there, but Waldo – had a couple things stolen out of his truck. And then Pinkala had all of his camera gear stolen um, and along with like laptops, hard drives, stuff like that. So if you're familiar with our friend group from the past year, 
Pinkala's truck got stolen last year, actually. Um, and yeah, so with all of that, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we cannot get back um, that Pink films with, Waldo films with, makes all their content with. And unfortunately, insurance can't cover it all because of Pink Hall's truck getting stolen last year, basically. Um, in a really roundabout, weird way, that's kind of why. But Sobe, if you want to take over, I yeah. think that's kind of. So it's just like, I guess after we talk about this more, Ryan, I'd like Ryan to go into detail, kind of what happened last year too, because it's just, it's a bummer. It's a bummer for multiple reasons. It's a bummer that it happened. And it's a huge bummer that it happened to Pinkala again, because he's like, he's a probably one of the best dudes I know. And B he's a hardworking man. Like he works for his money. You know what I mean? He works, he works for the city. Um, he lives at home with his parents. He's banking money. He's saving money. He just started a new series called the meat season. You guys should check it out on YouTube. But last winter, kind of around this time when he got his truck stolen and all his electronics stolen, uh, it was crazy. It was horrible. He didn't get his electronics back, but he got his truck back. Um, and he, I guess like from that time all the way to a few months ago, he saved up and he bought new camera gear. He bought new laptops. He bought new stuff like that. And then for this to happen again, like right when he finally got right when he finally got set back up again, it's just like, I don't know. It's disheartening. So Adam and I, we called each other and we're like, this is, it's BS and we got to help our pals out. So Adam and I started a GoFundMe for Ryan and Waldo to help get some of their electronics back. And all we're asking is if you guys got a couple bucks to maybe donate to GoFundMe, uh, it would go a long ways. And we, we have a goal set on there. We've got everything listed out on, on probably how much uh, Waldo's iPad and all of Ryan's camera gear, like what it would cost combined. And that's our goal right there. Anything that we get above, above and beyond that, we're going to donate to future anglers in Minnesota. So we're, we're literally just trying to get as much money as we can back to these boys and get them back up and rolling with their camera gears again, because they're hardworking dudes. They work every day. They grind their butts off on the weekends fishing and they try to capture it all. And uh, to not have the right equipment to do that, it's, it's stinks. So um, yeah, you guys are great dudes and we're just, we just want to be pals. And I know everybody that supports the crappie chronicles and supports me will support you guys. So. Yeah. yeah. So there should be links in the description for this. It's just for a GoFundMe. Like I said, insurance can't cover anything. Otherwise, we would totally do that. Um, but yeah, if everyone who is watching this right now donated $5, we would have enough for them. That's basically what it is. Um, so yeah, if anybody can help out, we really appreciate it. So that Ryan can get back to hunting and not worrying about how to save up to uh, film adventures. Because, you know, that's what we love to do. And it's really unfortunate when that stuff gets stolen. And kind of uh, along with that, if you're ever at any ramps and you see something that isn't right, like say something and, you know, call someone, do something about it. Um, it happens a lot in the ice fishing scene, it seems, whether it's with permanent houses at accesses and all that. And it always sucks. There's no other way around it. So we're trying to do our best to help out some buddies. Um, yeah. But yeah. So that's kind of that. Thanks, boys. Yeah, and, like, yeah. I guess one thing I would just touch on quick, since, like, I have been fortunate to have this happen to me twice now, um, is just <laughs> that, like, if you, you know, if you kind of live more of an outdoor lifestyle, you do a lot of different activities, whatever it is, whether you're hunting, fishing, you play a lot of hockey, whatever, like, you're going to travel with gear in your rig, and, like, you always have stuff. Maybe it's stuff you don't think that people can see or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've just been coming to the conclusion that it's like, there's some really terrible people out there that if they just like want your stuff, they're going to figure out how to get it. So um, it sucks to have to be like the guy that's always bringing all your gear in and out of the house or the garage or whatever every time. But um, I know like for me personally, I'm probably going to have to start doing that way, way more just because it's like not worth going through all this crap every time that somebody decides to do something really stupid. So, yeah, I mean, it sucks that we even had all our stuff locked up. You know, they just literally smashed the windows out and like st stole our stuff. And I don't even know. It was crazy because they like were able to disable both the car alarms like pretty quickly. Like, yeah, like <clears throat> three seconds. Yeah. It was it was quick enough that we literally thought someone hit the wrong button on their keys. Yeah, we were literally sitting like 400 yards away from the parking lot 
And we're like, we're like looking over there. We're like, wow, that's crazy. And then we walk back and we're like, oh, that was our stuff. That's crazy. <laughs> like it sucks. And it's like, it's almost funny to like think about how stupid that is. But like, it's just, it sucks that people have to do that. And, you know, they're not people that like stole it because they wanted to like use that stuff. You know, they're just selling it to do whatever. I don't know. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of questions about what landing it happened at. Um, it was Pickerel Lake for St. Paul. Um, and like, we're literally saying that because none of you should go there. There's been, there's been like 24, 27 robberies in the last two weeks there. Um, it's not good. There was a bunch of other people fishing. Like we were definitely not alone, but it's just not worth it. So yeah, we've been keeping our eyes out at pawn shops and stuff like that. Unfortunately, like with them disabling the car alarm so quickly, and then they disabled Waldo's iPad within five miles of leaving, and they were like gone. They were pros. Um, like they, we're we're not getting it back. They knew what they were doing. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, any help is really appreciated. We appreciate all the support, and uh, yeah, just trying to help our friends out. Is the link is the link in the description of this video right here? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be. It should be in the description of the video just down below. So if anyone wants to go check that out, if anyone needs a link, DM me. I'll send it to you, whatever whatever it is. I can get it over to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pink like this comment. Yeah. Worst luck. Oil. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'll pass that off to anyone anytime. This is, this is I guess, <laughs> tell them about what happened. Like, because I feel like okay. this, new situ- this new situation that happened, major bummer. And the situation that happened before, major bummer. But how you got your truck back and like the report, like that's kind of a funny story and unique. So yeah. rewind last okay. year. About All right. So, so yeah, we'll rewind. So this was actually just barely a year ago, last December. So last winter we're literally doing the same thing. We're like filming ice bids and everything. And uh, I came home from work, whatever. I was like making some food at home, cooking some dinner. It was like, and by the way, you live in a pretty nice neighborhood, Pink. Like, it's yeah, not, this yeah, is, this is not like it's get to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, I, yeah, like I live in the burbs. This is not like downtown or whatever. No, and it was right after uh, Panger was up here. We filmed with him here, like cooking some stuff. That's actually why. So we were here cooking. So I had brought because Bart has like nothing in his house. So I brought everything, like all my cooking stuff, like everything. And uh, I drove, I drove home and this was like that next, that next night, I guess I had everything in the truck and came home from work that day was like making food. And I went outside to get something. Cause I had like all my knives, all my cooking stuff out there. So I walk outside, grab something out, walk back in the house. And, uh, and then I was like, Oh, there's something else out there. I want So I've been inside now for maybe three minutes and I walk back outside and I was just like, I'm standing in my driveway and like, the truck was like right here, right in front of my house. And I'm just like standing there looking around and it's like, it's not right here. <laughs> what time was this at? Like, it was like 6 PM. Like it had just gotten dark, you know? And uh, I'm like this, like in my head, I'm like, what am I missing here? <laughs> like, this is ridiculous that I would walk outside and like, it's not there. So I like walk back inside. I'm like, well, everyone's here. Like, "Mm -hmm, what's the deal? And so then I'm like, yeah, like it's gone. Like I have the key. I'm holding the keys in my hand. (laughs) I'm like, there's no, there's no truck here. So I freak out immediately. Right. So like call the cops and everything. And, uh, and so before I get to like how it progressed, basically it sounded like there had been like a bunch of these in like our neighborhood area going on like recently that there were a lot of vehicles being broken into or stolen or whatever. So the truck was like basically at, at my house, there was a spare set of keys in the armrest of the truck. So somebody like got in there was like rifling through everything, found the keys must've been like, there's enough gear in here to make it worth just like jacking this whole thing. So they stole the whole truck. So now I'm like, I was just going to do the wall, but after looking at this truck, like, we should just take the whole and there thing. Was, yeah. And it's like, I had all my ice gear in there and I'd just come back from like a hunting trip in like North Dakota. Luckily I'd like, there was no like firearms or anything in there, but there was like a lot of gear, you know, like packs and equipment, whatever. So, and I knew like that the back 
had like a good amount of like fishing equipment and everything. And I was just like freaking out. And at that time I had all of my filming stuff in there too. Cause like I said, I don't really like leave any of this stuff in the truck, but I'd like just driven home from work. And I was like at my, at my house, you know, normally like I would have went out there and like, gra Oh, grab my backpack out everything. So then, uh, <clears throat> the, you know, the police take a police report and everything. And like, you know, when you file police police report, they're just kind of like, okay, hey, we'll like let you know if we hear anything. And so like several days go by and I've heard nothing like at all. So I'm just like, well, that's sick. So I'm like borrowing a car so I can like drive to work and stuff. Cause this was on like, a, like, I want to say like a Monday or something. It was like the week of Christmas, like the, at the beginning of the week before. So like go through that whole thing. And then I would say like on like Wednesday or Thursday, the police call and they're like, Hey, like we uh, recovered your truck. Sure. So, and I'm like, all right, like, is it destroyed? Like, they didn't even say anything, you know, they're just like, oh, it's at an impound lot. It was like found in downtown, like Northeast Minneapolis, I think North. Yeah. Somewhere up there. And, uh, and I was like, okay. And so the dude's like, yeah, there's, uh, not really anything in it. So I was, he was asking if any of the stuff in it was mine. And I was like, well, is it, there's like a lot of stuff. And he's like, well, no. <laughs> so I was like, oh, fantastic. And then the, then he asked like a real weird question. He's like, not that it matters right now, but he's like, do you use uh, like a lot of drugs? And I was like, no, no. <laughs> you know, like that seems like a weird question for a cop. Just be like, use a... so he's, so I was like, no. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to take a bunch of stuff out of here then. Cause there apparently there was like a <laughs> well, bunch these needles of needles are yours. Yeah, okay. It was like needles on the dashboard and like all this stuff. So Whoa. he like cleaned all that crap out. And then he told me on the phone, he's like, yeah, it looks like, it looks like the back was locked up because my truck has like a topper on it. And he's like, oh, it looks like the back was locked up. So you should be good. And in my head, I was just like, okay. But then I'm thinking like, I knew that the topper wasn't locked. <laughs> so I was like, that seems weird. So I like drove, I like went down there, like me and my dad went down there to get it out and everything. And like super stupid, you have to like pay to get your own car out of the impound lot and everything. After and then, it's stolen. Yeah. They're like, yeah. And they know it's stolen. Like you go there and they're like, oh yeah, your car was stolen. And then they're like, okay, it's like a hundred and whatever dollars to get it out. And uh, yeah. So I go and like get all that and I get to the car and the back, I like look in there and I open it and it is full of stuff and none of it is mine at all. <laughs> like it is full of like printers and like person, like all oh, kinds my. of crap. And there's like some freaking like hooker boots in there. Like this thing was just like chock full of stuff. Like I got some really good pictures from that whole thing. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we go, we, we get out of there. We're like, okay, ditching all this stuff. Like a lot of it was just garbage or broken or whatever. So um, yeah, so we get the truck back. Luckily there was no like significant damage to it or whatever. All, everything that wasn't connected to the truck in the cab was gone though. Like every piece of like pl extra plastic, anything like totally removed. Can and, you imagine uh, like if, if your truck could tell stories, like where oh it's been God. and what it's seen and they'd like, burn like, yes. Yeah. And so they, <laughs> and like, they burned like a full tank of gas too, doing whatever they did. <laughs> <laughs> did you find like, a bunch of Arby's wrappers and stuff in the, Oh my side? God. Yeah. There's like fast food wrappers everywhere. There's like crushed up cookies in like every cup holder and like crack in the whole truck. Dude, they had a serious party in there for sure. And then, of course, they were like chain smoking cigs, so it just reeked on the inside. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. That was just a wild experience to uh, go through all that. But just the shock like, of, like, being in your car, walking in your house, and then walking back outside and being like, oh, I used to be here. That was, like, <laughs> a crazy feeling. He I remember the text I got from him, and it just said, dude, my truck's gone. And, and like, I was what? like, huh? And he's like, no, my truck got stolen out of my driveway. Yeah, like the whole thing. And I was like, like what? Yeah, <laughs> that was so weird. But uh, yeah, so Waldo and Griff, if you want to share the Facebook link now, um, it went for some reason, the first one went down, but it's up and running now. So anyone from Facebook who just tuned in, um, we have Sobe here. We kind of went through it already, but uh, <laughs> we have a go and fund me up for Waldo and Pinkala from having um, their window smashed in. We lost a ton of camera gear. Um, yeah, just to help get all that taken care of. If you want to hear all the stories, you can listen to the replay on YouTube. But uh, yeah, thanks, Sobe. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for letting me have on here. And um, yeah, I hope 
I hope the fundraising goes well and I hope we can get it back for you guys. At least some of it, you know what I mean? Like if we could, if we could raise even, I don't know, whatever, a, a quarter of whatever it costed you guys to rebuy it all, that would be amazing. So yeah, we appreciate you guys and I'll, I'll let you guys get back to it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, just let us know when you want to do another fish donkey derby and get dusted. <laughs> I wasn't even there I'm last the time. And you got me. Too. I'm the worst one here. I'm just a camera guy. <laughs> I'll one v one. I'll one v one Griff right now. I know he's your stud. <laughs> I would All love right, to see that. See you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. See you. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Got that um, done. Thank you to Sobe for tuning in. Um, everybody who's coming from Facebook, welcome. Sorry, we had, for some reason, some technical difficulties on the Facebook side. But if you will share this and, uh, yeah, just get it everywhere. Send the YouTube link everywhere. Um, and uh, if you make some comments, just a reminder, I do have a Griff's Chronicle Rod with a Clam Elite Spooler and a Drop XL already on it. I have fished with this rod. The tip's good. You're fine. Um, yeah, it's I never been done. Yeah, 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 it's never been yeah. I actually broke the tip off a few weeks ago. I just didn't tell anybody. I do have a broken one we could give away if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have that and then some drop jigs as well. So if people want to comment, um, yeah, they'll be entered in for all that. Uh, and then like we talked about earlier as well, uh, the release of the relevant hard water lenses. If you want any relevant shades until February 27th, use the code TCC20, take 20% off your order. All right, back to question and answer. Here we go. Uh, we got to get through all the you got robbed comments. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice of you. Okay, here's a good question. Five feet of water, really dirty water, high pressured area. What would be your bread and butter confidence setup? What is this thing? Dirty water? Uh, high, yep. High pressured yeah. area, dirty water, five feet. Either uh, probably a white pinhead minnow would be mine. This one right here, actually. I might go something dark. I mean, they can see dark just as good as they can see light. So, yeah. In dirty low water. glitter what do you got yeah that's, that's the, the white or top. white and silver it glows too here i can blow it up for you right now All about that glow oh uh, right. green oh he's charging her up Look at oh that. yeah you gonna turn the lights off too My God. i don't need to damn it's like a damn beacon <laughs> i'd eat that um Okay, next question. Where is everyone fishing for crappies this time of year? Still deep or starting to shallow up again? Depends on the lake. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff going on right now, basically. We need a good like, warm up. This weekend, Griff and I will be fishing the Panfish State Championship, and we're going to be up 10, 12 foot of water, even shallower near weeds. In the weeds. Yeah. Yep. I guided today on Tonka, and it was all a weed bite. 10 feet of water. Weeds up to the surface and just get down in the weeds. And I mean, the thing about it is um, fish stay in the weeds all year and they also stay in the basin. It's totally. They're two different the fish. same fish, but they do different things. You know, there's shallow fish, there's deep fish, just like in the summer, shallow fish, deep fish. Um, you just got to find which ones are going. You know, a lot of times the basin fish at this time of the year are pretty shut off because they're, they're, their oxygen levels going down where. If you go up in the shallows and the weeds are still green, they got a lot of a lot of oxygen up there, and those fish will actually be more active. So, yep. Um, here we go. How do high pressure systems and low pressure systems affect bite windows? High pressure systems stack the bite windows so they're super small, and sometimes there isn't even a bite window. Um, low pressure is usually a, a pretty good bite. Um, it just, it gets the fish more active, gets the bait more active. Uh, if you've ever, uh, like dived down deep in a swimming pool and, or like sank to the bottom of a swimming pool, it, it hurts your head a little bit cause there's a lot of pressure. So, 
uh, when that barometer gets super high, it's pretty much the same effect on the fish. You do that a lot. Every time we do a live stream, I learn swimmer? a little bit more about why Waldo takes oh, the way he does. You spent a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. It's just a big thing to the body. Oh, uh, Waldo, this is a really good Vexlar question for you from Daryl. Um, do you have any idea why when I switch my from normal mode to low power on my FLX 20, the depth changes from 10 to 49? Yeah, so he's probably referring to the DD100 digital depth readout on his unit. Uh, when you put your unit into low power mode, you reduce your signal strength by 50%, preventing the DD100 of getting an actual accurate depth readout. So it'll do that every single time. That's why if you look at a 28 or a FLX 30 that have the digital depth readouts, they're actually deactivated in low power and on a 30 it's low power and medium power for that same reason. That's why we also don't recommend using auto ranging in low power mode because it'll do the same thing. It just, it weakens your bottom signal strength so much that if we had it there, it would be bouncing all around. So that's why it's disabled on those units. But that's why it reads that on your DD100. Okay, perfect. Um, we answer this question a lot. Uh, do you use jointed pin heads or regular pin heads? I'll use regular. Um, that's a consensus answer all around. Um, <clears throat> uh, important announcement as well. Regular. Yeah, the regular. There it is. Um, important, important announcement as well. Uh, next Thursday, actually one week from now, um, we'll be at Thorn Brothers. So we have a meetup at Thorn Brothers from five to eight o'clock. We will be there with show special pricing, doing seminars, uh, meet and greet, have merch there, everything. So make sure you come swing on down to Thorn Brothers if you are in the area. And speaking of Thorn Brothers, while we get some more comments and questions loaded up, um, Griff and Waldo, do you want to kind of go through your chronicle rods? And then we'll also talk about pinks since pinks is new Gee. and people are just starting to get to see it and they will see it a lot more to end this season. But Griff, you want to go first and talk about your Thorn brothers rod? Yeah. So mine is a 24 inch, um, power noodle. It's got the recoil guides on it, four and a half inch wind grip handle. Um, this one happens as a schoolie on it. Um, you can use any reel you want, inline, spinning rod, spinning reel, sorry. Um, I use these two with this rod. Um, but what I do th with this one is it's more of a precise action. You know, you can really get up close to the hole. It's more controlling your jig. You got more control over your jig with this, and you can tight line if that's kind of your thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just been an awesome rod. Um, everybody that I've talked to so far likes it. And so, yeah, 24 inches, short rod, super windy out. You can get up close to the hole and, and uh, kind of, you know, get it. Um, what am I? I don't know what I'm trying to say. But uh, you can, you know, the wind won't affect it as much is what I'm trying to say. So you can get up there and you can kind of just fish over the hole. And um, so that's why I designed a shorter rod. And I like to tight line a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my rod in a nutshell. Would you say that it's the ultimate down jigging rod? Any rod's good down jigging <laughs> rod if you're good at it. No, Perfect. but it is, really, it is really good for down jigging. Bart All right, Waldo, rod, you are up. Waldo's Chronicle. Give a quick I one. Found out, I did find out Bart's rod the other night is really good for down jigging with a three mil jig. With no yeah. bait. No, there you go. No yeah, bait. with no bait. Actually, yeah, the last <laughs> yeah. thirty minutes, just no bait. It was, it was mind boggling. I'm a tungsten jig, not a pinhead. Yeah, they'll see it, but yeah, it was, it was lit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Waldo, talk about yours now. Yep. So mine's a 36 inch power noodle with a four and a half inch wind grip. It also has recoil pads <laughs> like uh, Griff's does. Um, and this is this is a pretty cool rod. This one, it's uh, it's a very aggressive style of fishing or power fishing rod. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because of how long it is. Uh, it exaggerates your hand motions a little bit more. So it really allows you to get very aggressive with the jig and to pound with your uh, jig. We love using it for spoons, tikka minnows, larger tungsten jigs. Uh, it's a it's a big bait rod. 
essentially is what it is. I've also used chubby darters on this. Um, you could use uh, you could use little rip and wraps on it. Um, and it seems like it has worked really well for those techniques. But yeah, it's kind of a quick synopsis of the Waldo Chronicle. It's uh, definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> All right, I'll talk about mine quick. Okay, and then the other one that was on the initial release of the Crappie Chronicle series is mine, Bart's Chronicle. Um, this is a super versatile rod, and I feel like across the board of us, this is probably the most used rod. <coughs> um, it's a 28-inch um, blank with a 3-inch medium-light trip wire spring bobber. Um, this rod is very moderate, so it's really good for fighting fish, uh, especially in shallow water. Um, this is my favorite. This is what I use a lot, like all the others, four and a half inch wing grip handle. Um, yeah, just a really great rod. And if you want to see any of these, they will be out at Thorn Brothers next week. So you can come ch check them out for yourself. All right. So then mine, we just kind of released fairly recently. Um, this is the pink panfish. So this is um, kind of a little bit different rod altogether. So it's a 32 inch uh, solid carbon blank. Um, it's a light blank in a panfish taper, but unlike a noodle rod, I don't know if you can see this. Can I, I don't know if you can see that, but it's super parabolic rod. You can't see anything, but it, <laughs> it'll bend all the way back to the handle so i don't know if you can see how how that's kind of arcing around there so unlike a noodle where it's going to be kind of stiff and then just have a lot of tip this one uh it's got action throughout the full blank it doesn't have as soft of a tip so if you see like let me see if put on bart's face here so when i'm if you're working like a super small jig you're not going to get that tip action like you would on a noodle rod but if you're i mean i would say anything four mil and up you could jig with this if you wanted to but it's a really deadly spoon rod and uh, we've been using it for that blade jig quite a bit, uh, putting a minnow on it and catching them that way. Um, and then as far as I fish pro rod, this is pretty much the deal. Um, it looked like you hook a pike or a bass on this thing and it's super fun. You can really torque on them, um, keeps the fish pinned really, really good. You don't have to worry about the blanks straightening out and getting slack in your line. It stays loaded the whole fight. Even on like a nine inch crop, it'll still stay really, really loaded. Um, but yeah, this has been a sick rod. Um, we'll probably continue to use it more and more kind of as the season goes on, this late ice period is going to be pretty sick for this kind of rod too. Um, but yeah, every time we're using tip ups, this is the rod we're putting in it every single time, but I've been loving it for pretty much anything. Um, we've been running with spinning reels. You could, you could put a spooler on this if you wanted to, but I mean, for a tip up, obviously <coughs> the spinning rod reel is the way to go, but this rod is really sick. So they do have these at Thorn and on the website. So jeez. Sorry, but, I swallowed something. Yeah, out. at the meetup, you can check these out, but I think you'll be pretty stoked if you pick one up and just flex it a couple times. You'll tell right away that you got to get one. That's the deal. All right. Drop those comments down. You'll be registered to win uh, Griff's Chronicle and some jigs. Um, so along with that, we are having a merch whoop, We are having a merch sale again. Um, so use the code live stream and you will get uh, – You'll get a free hat with $60 purchase of the Crappie Chronicles apparel. So um, all, all the link, geez, all the links can be found down below. You going to make it, Bart? I don't know. We're getting, it's getting tough. We need some lozenges. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you do. I was doing great all day and then I had to talk and now we're screwed. Okay. Waldo. Uh, we'll go around the room here, but what um, what Vexar do you prefer, 2830, or which one do you personally run? Uh, I run a FLX30, um, mainly because it allows you to uh, change your frequencies on it. Um, and most of the time, we're fishing pretty shallow water anyways, so we're always in low power mode. And all the units above an FLX12 have low power mode, which is super nice. But I'm using the 30 mainly because of the frequencies on it. Uh, there's seven different frequencies. Each one controls your, uh, each one has a different cone angle, essentially, ranging from about 16 degrees to about seven degrees. And so it really allows you to make those fine-tuned, precise uh, changes with your unit uh, that none of our other units really have. So that's my personal favorite reason for it, uh, for using that unit. Uh, Griff, what do you use? Uh, the 28. 
I just like to turn it on and go. I don't want to sit there and dial everything in, so I just 28. Um, I use a 28 as well. Same reason as Griff. I just want to turn it on and go. However, the 30 does have awesome features. Waldo very often has the best Vexlar image or like screen reading out of any of us. Um, oh, yeah. The 30 is it, Yeah. The a deuce the 30 is readout is way better. It's just, just turn it on and go. Yeah. I use the 20, which is like, um, it's got a lot of good features, but not a lot to where you're overwhelmed if you really don't know like, a lot of technical stuff about Vexlar. So it's super easy to just turn it on. You know, there's only whatever, like five different modes to even put it in. So you don't have to get too in the weeds on like what settings needs to be on or anything like that. You know, same like these guys are talking. It's just turn it on and when you're fishing. Um, yes. Wal so Waldo's Chronicle, I feel like excels the most with larger end tungsten jigs and pinhead binos. Um, yeah. Or even like a ribbon leech spoon. It's definitely not a three mil rod. That yeah. is for sure. It's yeah, you have a bad time a with a three mil. Yeah. It, it, it's just, you, it's so long that you can't see your line nearly as good. And the other thing about it is uh, it has a lot more backbone. So you don't get that feel you get with either Griff's rod or Bart's rod. Bart's rod super awesome for three mils because of the spring tip built in. That trip wire is incredibly sensitive. Yeah, I would say for yours too, like it, it's really good pinhead rod when the bite is like a little lighter, when they're not just crushing it. Yeah. You can see that bite in the tip really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, Griff, this is a quick question for you. How much ice you see in Antonka? Uh, there was 17 today. So it's pretty much been the average out there. That's actually not as much as I guess. No, there's no. a ton on Chisago right now. There hasn't been a ton anywhere, really. Um, yeah. Best jig color for crappies? Uh, we would probably say uh, white or black. That, that's a really Maybe. good starting point. Yeah, I would start there and work your no. way up. <laughs> All right. Um, some good old river system questions. We can get more into these and talk about rivers because we're probably going to be going back to them soon, which has got me excited because I'm very sick of basin fish. Um, even though Griff and I caught one fish the other day fishing the river. It was still an exciting one fish. We got it. it. We burned through two drills that day. Actually, you guys didn't you didn't know that. We literally, we literally killed started two a we started a dewald on fire. Sick. Yeah. It was Glad pretty, it wasn't mine. It was we, were sending, we were sending smoke signals. Yeah. That one point. Yeah. It Wait, was not bagging no. up any DeWalt products. No. No, 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 no. It, you gotta realize, like, though, it was abused. No. Yeah. It was very much abused. <laughs> yeah. So that. They were old. Yeah. No, actually, the one that you guys first blew up was only a year old. But here's the thing. So I work at Vexlar, and we also own a company called Cadro, which is the ice augers we use. I do all of the auger testing and R and D. So those drills see more holes than most people would ever do in fifteen to twenty years of drilling holes. That one hole and we ended its life in four oh, hours. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just absolutely toasted the thing. I mean, <laughs> to the point where the flywheel doesn't even spin. Yeah. And the other one, the other one was actually five years old. So that one was a trooper, but the boys locked up the gears on that one. So I got two drills now I need to send. Hey, buddy. Yeah. yeah. But I well, that's another drills. reason for a live stream. We can't drill a hole right now. <laughs> we had a day. Uh, but no, hey, we're good. We're good. We're all good. Now. But, uh, okay. So what do you look for in big river systems for crappies? Um, number one thing I feel like is spawning habitat. If you can find spawning habitat, they are probably close by. Um, well, I mean, this is kind of a what time of year? That too. They're all, if we're going to be in a different fall, place all, every time, all, all of the year, you know. So yeah, winter well, I'd say backwater stuff fishing. like that. You know, channel arms. So I mean, it's they, well, they, they just change uh, location all you know well, all like, season. Crappies don't love being in the main current at all. Yeah, so they like, hate the current. We honestly probably one of the, the main things to look for, I would say, is if you got like a main river channel coming down, 
a cut, like a cut or an arm that goes back up current away. So the current's not blowing into the mouth of it. So they can actually back around the corner. Stuff like that is usually pretty good spot to look. But it's going to change throughout the season. So yeah. winter is going to be shallow backwaters, you know, eddies, marinas, stuff like that. And then they're going to just change location all, all season. Yeah. yeah, it's like every couple of weeks they pull in, pull out, pull in, yeah. pull out. Yeah, and there would be like waves of fish too. Like you could be in one spot and not catching them one day, and the next day you go in there and just throttle them because a new wave of fish pushed up in there. Yeah, yeah. River yeah. never took still. Notice that hourly almost. You would yeah. have just pods coming through here and there. Yeah, and on the river, depth is irrelevant. Like don't think anything's too shallow. <laughs> like you could go six inches under the ice and still be catching them. Well, look at the one spot we fished, 2.9 feet. Yeah, yeah, that was shallow. And you could walk out to where it was five and not get bit. Yep. Walk yeah. out to where it got four, and it was, it was five feet from where we were, and you mm. couldn't get bit. Um, Griff, do you have any guide openings, or are you booked? No, I got a couple. Um, when are you looking, Daryl? I mean, I got – Slide in your like, DMs. I have like five in February and probably eight in March. So, yeah, just just message me and we'll get at it. Um, so be with a good reminder, Crappy Chronicles merch sale going on right now. There you are. Thanks, there you Obi. are. Thanks, Sobe. Nice to have you on, man. Um, Waldo. Best Vax for a beginner. FLX 12. You could go with an FL8, but if you spend just a little bit extra, you can also look at recondition units. We do sell those at Vexlar. You'll save about uh, anywhere from 50 to 80 bucks on a unit. Um, and you get the same warranty as a brand new one, so you can save a little coin there. But an FLX 12 is awesome because you get the low power mode feature. You get the flat screen, so it's very easy to see out in the sunlight. Uh, comes with a 12 degree ice deucer, which is great for pretty much every depth scenario that you can put yourself in. Um, it's just a really good all around unit. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of crazy features. Um, and it, it's one of those units where it, it's really, it's just such a good bang for your buck unit that I would definitely look at getting that one. So does that one have the weed mode, Waldo? No, 28 is the only 20? unit that has the weed mode. Okay. And the weed mode isn't on the 30 because the 30 has multiple frequencies. Right. So like, basically you have it. But yeah, you know. it's like weed mode on steroids almost. Right. But the right. 12 has low power mode, which if you look at what we've been doing this year, about 90% of the time we've been in low power mode because it doesn't spook the fish. It also yep. eliminates a lot of clutter on your screen, so you get better sizing of your jig and the fish. Um, and so that unit has it built in, so you don't need to buy any add-ons or accessories to get your unit to do that. So that's by far the best one. Um, so yeah, this comment tonight, uh, tonight with the storm that moved in, the pressure dropped and the fish were chewing. I would expect that we were debating filming tonight, but I think everybody kind of had to be at home for various reasons. So yep. we decided to do this. Plus, it was pretty freaking windy. Though. Plus, it was really windy, so your <laughs> audio would have been absolutely terrible. Yeah, there yeah, was wind horribly gusts windy. of 50 down here. That would not have been fun. <laughs> they were biting. Um, here they were. <laughs> do, 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 do. I was biting the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brent just got Pink's Rod this re week. What reel do you like using on it? Cheap ones. Yeah. I put a I put a 1,000 size spinning reel on it. It's a little bit bigger than a standard ice reel, but if you're using it for tip-ups, that's a nice reel to have because if you hook a pike or something like that, the drag actually performs a little bit better than the tiny little 500 size ice reels. Um but that's, yeah, I use a Cadence 1000 CS5 on there. Uh, yeah, mine's a Sienna 1000, right? Or 500. This is a 1000. Yeah. So most of us are using a 1000 size reel on there. Um, you could downsize, but to me, it seems like you get better line pickup with the 1000. And uh, plus, you can probably double this reel as an open water reel, too. So you don't, you can kind of get 
two for one out of it. Um, what are your thoughts on bait feeder reels? In what which conditions do you use them? Uh, bait feeders, well, though those are like like a teardrop, right? No, no. no. So, so no. like a bait. So okay. So for a bait feeder reel, I would say right now there's only a couple companies that are making them for like an ice size, like a 500 or 1000 size. Oh, I know and that would about. be the, the only situation I would probably be using that in an ice fishing setup would be if I was running iFish pro tip ups, because if you have the bait feeder style, which is not this, you don't have to open the bail. You can just click the lever in the cool. back. So if it's windy, no line comes off your spool at all. You can just click it, put it on the lightest setting it's got. And when a fish takes it, it'll just peel line off and you go there, click the lever and set the hook. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. The only reason why I think a lot of us haven't bought them yet is just because one, they cost a little bit. And two, um, those reels, it's still not as light as if you have the bail open. And yeah. a lot of times we're fishing crappies. So we want the lightest resistance on that fish as it's taking line. And so it's hard to beat just the, the line itself coming off the spool versus the reel allowing the line to do that with the bail closed. Yeah. I've heard some good things about that. Akuma just put one out. A new yeah. The Akuma nice size one that's supposed to be legit. Yeah. It's the Seamar bait feeder or whatever. I've yeah, heard they a make lot a, of good things about it, that. It's like red and black. They make yep. a 500 and a 1000. Yeah. They were um, also back when I tried to buy them. <laughs> This is a good comment from Joe. Good, got low pressure tonight in the storm, and the bite was garbage. Some people say low is slow. Waldo says low is good. Um, yeah, it really it depends on each lake. Um, you need to know your lakes and your ecosystems, I think, to really know what what the best conditions are. Um, when you low get into the lake ice, the front, huh? Uh, well, the, his question is like the low pressure tonight in the storm. Low pressure is good until it changes quickly. And tonight it changed quickly. And so that's why like during a storm is usually not good, but like before leading up to a storm can usually be better. Cause like two nights ago, we had a really good night out fishing. Yeah. The bite, I mean, the bite was tough, but we caught a lot of fish. So um normally during a storm even though the if the pressure is low during the storm it's not the best when it's usually the falling pressure versus actually just the low yeah exactly when it's bottomed out it can do some weird things but that falling falling pressure or stable low pressure is good but like like if it's like a very drastic pressure change or a, a very significant front that can usually throw them off yeah yeah, like those barometric pressure charts, if you're looking at one, like today when that storm was coming in, it was probably high and it just went like that. Like some of these long prolonged downs are, are typically when we see the best bites is on that kind of like tapering yeah. downward trending. Yeah. Gradual pressure change. Right. Yep. Um, do we fish for any other species outside of the show while I perch your bluegills? Um, I don't get a lot of time to ice fish outside of the show, so I don't, I don't really do much else. Um, but open water, I, I bass fish, I tournament bass fish like all year. So, yeah, I, I do a little bit of everything, I guess. Normal ice years, I, I go all over chasing anything from perch to walleye to lake trout to burbot. Um, and then I, or open water, I do crappies in the spring. And then bass all summer long with Bart. And then uh, in the fall, I do a little bit of walleye fishing, but mostly just bass in the summer and panfish in the winter. Yeah, I pretty much fish for everything. <laughs> but yeah. like in the winter, like this year has been crazy just because we've been so busy doing like this stuff. But in like a normal winter, mo almost most of the time I just spend fishing pike down here in the metro and stuff, just chasing tip ups and whatever um oh griff's back there we are um okay so this is a good one um what's your confidence level at breaking the 18 inch mark um especially at locations other than this is undisclosed location your other areas produce bigs but generally not that caliber um we'll kind of go around the room with this because i feel like this is a good time to kind of talk about this um i mean our 
our confidence level is the same as it was kind of going into this. We're heading into the best bite window for it to happen now, probably the next month. Um, confidence is definitely rising. It has been yeah, a while. <laughs> things are getting better. We and the thing is, uh, there's a lot more places to catch 18 inch caliber fish than people believe, uh, especially in the Twin Cities area. I've heard of probably four or five of them getting caught already this year. None of them have been out there. Um, and actually, completely different areas, too. Like, yeah, completely different areas, all, all within 60 miles. Um, and I think three of the biggest fish we've filmed the last two years, or maybe four. I only think one of our top five biggest fish have come out of uh, there, if you even know where it is. Uh, so uh, that's kind of what's funny. There's big fish all around. And um, I actually think we're most excited for places. Um, I got a couple places I'm really excited about. I think we'll be able to break it there. I know Waldo's got a few of his. If you guys think it'll be the river, if you guys think it'll be lakes. So, yeah, I think my confidence is about the same heading in. But that's extremely low. I mean, we're, we're essentially musky fishing for a crappie. Like, we're ice fishing for the biggest crappie in a lake. Um, that, there's no other really way around it. We're yeah, we're for a for one fish. Yeah, and like realistically, I mean, like we're chasing that because that's what we know lives here. Um, but at the same time, it's still a very low percentage game. Like we're ch we're chasing the top tier, you know, of that species. And no matter what body of water you're on, it's not like there's tons of eighteen or you know seventeen plus inch fish. So you you know you might get a small a small. Uh, whatever year class or something that some of those fish made it through and there's a, you know, above normal population of them, but it's super uncommon. So um, there's really kind of like key times throughout the year. Like right now is not when like we would even really be expecting to hit one of those. It's no, like, we shouldn't have even been filming <laughs> the last three or four weeks. So like this kind of <laughs> moving into that. this late ice period is like just a, a, a time when a lot of those, well, fish in general, but, especially those bigger fish tend to feed more often. And like our odds go up because the times when they're actually going to be catchable is bigger than what it is right now. Well, and I think they group up more too. They go from being, oh, the, sure. they Absolutely. go from being the rogue random fish that you catch in the middle of the night to being in the middle of the school of, you know, nine to 12 that you're catching. Um, they group up more. So yeah, like Ryan said, I mean, then we'll let Waldo and Griff talk too, but, um, I think it's like if we're not sitting here or at any point in the show saying our confidence level of getting an 18 is like we believe it's 50 50 like we're literally chasing a 0.01 percent chance well that, like, that's what we're doing yeah, and we like, just how figure many you hear about when you year? yeah when you put yourself yeah. in the right situation with the right circumstances on the right day and you put enough effort in it will happen um that's kind of the whole deal with it but griff waldo what what's what are you guys at i'm saying you pretty, you pretty, pretty, pretty you much said. nailed it on the head. I don't know. My confidence level is pretty high going into the rest of the year. Um, oh, God. Ooh, it ain't could have could could killed the room right there. Just <laughs> what the, are you say? the old prophet in here all of a sudden hey. was just going to be like, my He's confidence like, I'm, level I'm is I'm wore zero. out. <laughs> yeah. You. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm ready. Like, it's going to happen. Late late season February is going to happen. Everybody leaves the lake. All the permanents are gone. The noise is gone. The fish have been pushed into certain areas, and um, they just they get I vulnerable. thought we hooked it at about one forty seven a.m. Uh, a couple nights ago, but Waldo had to reel in a two and a half pound largemouth in the middle. Oh, it pissed me off, <laughs> dude. It was so bad. We were sitting there fighting it. We were like, oh, thank God we. Finally hooked it. I'm not bummed I missed out there. Yeah, it was the uh, bait. <laughs> Just the base. Yeah, at one in the morning. What the hell? I was so Bassmaster, dude. Hey, I know your feeling. Trust me, it happened earlier in the day. <laughs> um, that's a good question. So um, what do you prefer? Tree brush piles or weeds? Um, we don't have a lot of brush piles in Minnesota, actually. So um and I, I just prefer weeds in general. Um, fish yeah. move around a lot in them. Um, yeah. I think it's just a great place for bait and to catch big ones. I wouldn't mind a brush pile, though. 
There was a there was a brush pile on that spot in Tonka today. Oh, right really? in the weed. It was a tree laying right in the weed. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> That's why you're all sitting here. Did you cool. look at it on your camera or what? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was a like a I don't think it was a full tree. I think it was like a big big limb that fell off, but it was laying directly through the weed patch. And they were just stacked right on that one weed patch. Yeah. It was pretty uh, cool. All right, Griff, you want to give a little seminar with your rod on what is tight lining versus normal jigging? Well, normal jigging, you're you're like watching your rod tip. You're trying to feel a bite, right? Well, with tight lining, you're not trying to feel a bite. You're trying to guess, basically guess that that fish has it, or you're watching, I shouldn't say guess, but you're watching your line over trying to watch your rod tip or feel the bite. You know what I mean? So like you're literally jigging and watching that line from being straight. And when it does, it coils or it does something different than what you're doing, that's a bite. And then you drop the rod, confirm bite, and then set the hook. Because you're, you like, you're, you're putting slack into the line to detect the bite. Correct. In the yeah. water, not above yeah. the water. Correct. You're looking down the hole. Yeah. The farther you can look down the hole, the, the better. So the farther you can see your line down the hole and see what it's doing, the better bite detection you're going to have. Um, okay. We are going to pop into one quick thing here. If um, all of you saw, we went out with the spit and chiclets um, a while ago. And uh, we're f helping fundraise for future anglers in Minnesota. So if you know anything about spit and chiclets or just the Barstools podcast, um, Paul Bissonette or Biz wearing that ice armor jacket, they gave it to us and all signed it. We gave it to future anglers in Minnesota. Right now they are doing a raffle. If you donate $7, $14, whatever it is, in $7 increments, um, that's how many raffle tickets you basically get for uh, hopping into that. So make sure you head over there and support future anglers in Minnesota. Um, that's, you know, how we got hooked up with Blake. And we're going to get Blake out on a giant here as well. So, and yeah. Yeah, and even if you don't care about those guys, it's still a good jacket. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can just wash the signatures <laughs> off if you wanted. Big jacket. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, do you use Zoom mode on Vexlars? Um, actually, this next episode we're showing yes a little bit. Uh, generally, crappies are pretty suspended. Um, so we're in like that. Normally, we're in the 10 to 15 foot depth range. So it doesn't really help that much. Um, but like the lake we were on the other day, they all came off the bottom. So it was very helpful. Yeah. Yes, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's been dropping a lot of comments. He saw us out on one of the lakes. What do you um, say? No, you know it's we, we don't know. No, we can't. We can't show it. Yeah, that's the thing. Talk, Jerry man. asked a good question without dropping lake names and everything. The well, guy's we, been following us everywhere. Everyone else can see it, though, right? No, no. Fucking Jerry. Yeah, they can. Oh, uh, yeah, they probably can. <laughs> Um, Jerry can ruin his own lakes. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun, Jerry. You know Jerry. Lives on it. Um, Lake Contour app. Do we use um, Navionics? Use use Navionics for about everything. Pretty much, yeah. No way. What? That Jeff comment? That's not possible. Picks or it didn't happen. Yeah, Jeff, if you got pics of that fish, text it to me because I live close enough that I'd go there. Um, <laughs> oh, Kip, obviously you. Thanks for the support, man, and watching everything. I'll send you some jigs. Thanks, Kip. Yeah, Kip's a good guy. He's always on there. Yeah, Kip's always around. He's a really good guy. Very good uh, sports reporter and journalist out in the West Metro somewhere. Maybe in Hutchinson area. I don't know where he is now. He's good at what he does. Um, I 
I'm trying to find another question. So. Come on, Bart. Uh, There's tons of them. Just click on one. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> or no, no kidding. All right, here we go. <laughs> Philip, our boy Philip, pop it in. Great. Yeah, Watch what up, Philip? On the back of the springs, I've seen more crappies. I'm assuming it's the oxygen level. That's good to know, too, Philip. That eliminates half of the places we want to go on the river. So we know <laughs> where we need to go now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's oxygen levels. Oxygen and current. That's where the shad will probably be. Yeah, it, it tends to stack the bait up on those springs throughout the winter. And it's the most stable uh, water temps, too, coming out of those springs. All right. And then we got... Um, Oh, Carl. Highly recommend a guide day with Griff. Had a blast with him a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Waldo. I believe Adam got his personal best that day. Sick. He did? The guy, that was with Carl. That day? the guy that was with Carl got his PB. Nice. You got a pretty good PB streak going. I have yeah. noticed that. You got a lot of people breaking PBs out with you. Very nice. Um, Waldo, how much do the FLX 12s run refurbished at Vexlar generally? Depends on the carrying case, but right in that $380 price range. Pink, Solid. can you come up with a Nashville hot crappie recipe? We got it. We got it. Done. It's already on we the just gotta, we, we just got to, you got to just tell Bart that uh, he needs to film it. You just tell him that. Done. We got it. So this is funny. Read the, <laughs> read this question out loud and then tell people where they can Think see it. Think have you ever tossed fish in a sauce and cooked the fish like chicken wings? No. Uh, we're thinking it's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say we should have almost started the series with that this year. Yeah. But who am I, you know? <laughs> Might be in the first episode. Yeah, you might want to watch that one. I'm pretty sure it's the first one. I think it's in the first episode. Yeah. We did oh, fish friends. wings. Come on, um, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, Waldo. Why and where do you use low power mode? Uh, 20 foot of water or less. Uh, two reasons. Doesn't spook the fish as much because you cut down your signal strength and clears up all the clutter on your screen so you get better sizing of your jig and the fish. Shit. Um, when and where do you prefer spinning reels over inlines? Depends on what we're fishing. If I'm fishing with crappies and I'm fishing a little deeper with like a, something I want to get down there fast, I'll use a spinning reel because they don't care about the twists as much. If I'm fishing bluegills, it's going to be an inline pretty much. Yeah. Don't you agree, Waldo? Yeah. Probably I, mean, how I just don't use a whole lot of spinning reels unless it's like my iFish Pro rods or dead stick rods. But right. uh, I use the Clam Spooler Elite inline, which is geared. So it's not yep. like one to one. You reel a lot faster with it than a one to one. But if you want to be super quick and efficient fishing in deep water, spinning reel is usually the way to go. It gets down quicker and uh, you can reel up a lot faster too. But the drag is way better on a spinning reel. 100%. So if, if you're, if you're yeah, messing with bigger, that, better. bigger fish, whatever. Yeah. That's um, what <laughs> favorite boots for ice fishing, waterproof boots. Most of us wear the clam sub zeros. Uh, they're really good boots. Waldo, <laughs> what do you wear? I used to wear the sub zeros until I destroyed mine, and then they were out of stock this year. So I got bunny boots right now. They're all right. Unless there's a hill involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'll see that next episode, too. Hopefully. I hope the footage turned out. Waldo fell down a hill. Eight Two. times. Eight. Eight. Eight times. Yeah. He fell down in a lot, like, repeatedly. Yeah. It's I was very close good. enough to help, but I didn't. I walked right by him with the Sub-Zeros pulling the house as he fell down eight times. Yeah. Uh, You're very warm, though. You be the judge. They're very, they're very <laughs> warm. Just zero traction. Just smooth on the bottom, though. Oh, yeah. Completely smooth. Um, Griff, you got out with – have you gotten out with the guy who won the last guide trip? Not yet. That's uh, two weeks. What day and where are you going? It's him and his daughter. <laughs> Justin, That'll be fun. Justin – I can't remember his last name, but it's Justin starts with a P. We should be having a good fight. Too. It's not going to be like right now. 
no, I got them booked a little later in the year, so it'll be nicer. Good deal. And I'm taking them to a a little secret spot. So, yeah, an undisclosed location. An undisclosed location. Yes, <laughs> not that undisclosed location, but a different one. <laughs> it's undisclosed. <laughs> All right, uh, full moon next week. How much do you put into moon phase? Um, I personally don't a lot other than night bites. Um, so Waldo and yeah. I will probably be out next week, actually burning the torch. Well, it just depends but... on when the moon is up too. I mean, yes. if you're, if it's moon not up at night, night, you're not going to have it. It's not going to affect the night bite. So yeah. Moon rise, moon set, moon overhead, moon underfoot. It really just kind of depends. Even if it's a full moon, it still depends on where that moon is positioned. Yeah. I think moon phases, well, right. moon phases definitely help though. Yeah, I think we notice it a lot in the spring, actually, with crappies. Well, yeah, oh, yeah we where we yeah. where we won that tournament. That was a moon face. That was they were totally moon face fish. They were there. They came in and they fed. They weren't there to spawn. It was yeah. slightly pre spawn. Like they were literally, they could have spawned, or they they you know they could still be pre spawn. But yeah, they moon was over giant. When it happened. It, yeah. But they were giant. They came in only to feed, and they left, and they never spawned there. Like, I fished it for the next two weeks, and not one fish spawned in that area. They were literally there. It was like a lunar bite, and then and they left. And you know what? We brought home the dough. Yes, we did. Cash money. Uh, this is a really good question from Simon Kyer. Simon, am I going to see you at the New Prague Fishing Clinic on Saturday? Also, let me know that. But – um. Do you guys ever find crappies on rocks in the winter? Um, what's funny, I think we talked about this with Pangrak when he was up because he had he fished with us for a few days, and he was like, you guys fish like no structure, mud, or weeds. Like it's always muddy. Um, and that that's very true for the winter. I feel like um, you go from bass fishing, fishing structure, weed edges, docks, rocks, um, bluff walls, all these sort of things. And you get to the winter, and uh, yeah, I don't. We never really fish rocks. I, I think the closest we get to rocks would be a rock or gravel sand mud transition line. Yeah. Um, that's about the only place we ever will fish for crappies on rocks. It's because Unless, of Chris, you have anything else? No. Yeah, we don't really fish. I mean, I got a couple spots where they go on the rocks right at night. But it's 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 a twenty minute bite, you know what I mean? They're just kind of, I think they're just traveling through there. It's not a, they stop there. It's a stopping point, but it's not a like chill spot, you know what I mean? Where they stay there and they, you're gonna keep catching them. They're just kind of transitioning through. But other than that, we really don't, you know, fish rocks. To be yeah. honest. Yeah, and we'll keep pounding through these questions. Just a reminder for everyone: you drop a question. Um, you'll be automatically registered to win a Griff's Conical Rod with a Clam Elite Spooler and um, some Clam Jigs as well. Um, and as a reminder, we are running our merch sale again. So $60 worth of Crappie Chronicles merch. <laughs> throw a hat in the cart, and uh, you'll be as happy as Griff is in that picture with your brand-new merch. Happy. Look at yeah! Look at that smile. Can we just run that? I'm clip? always happy. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should get that clip. It's pretty nice. <laughs> All right. Um, are you guys fishing in the weeds, or are you fishing the weed lines? Both. Yeah, but what you you know what a lot of time like today, um, on Tonka the fish were actually like. So it was a imagine just like a thirty by thirty yard weed patch, and on one end it's all cabbage and heavy milfoil and then it kind of tapers off into like milfoil slash uh coontail and the fish were sitting literally they were doing a circle they would swim over to the heavy cabbage but they didn't want to go into that stuff because it was so thick but they stayed out in like the the more sparse area so a lot of times what you want to find is those kind of travel paths pass in between the heavy weeds because there'll be sporadic spots where that's where they kind of travel through and that's what they were doing today like i drop it down there no fish in the heavy stuff move five feet right on the weed edge where it's sporadic and they were just as far as i could see until i hit the other thickness you know and then i just 
I kind of just said, okay, we'll drill this out, stay in between these weed patches. And yeah, we did really well. So nice. you're f fishing in the weeds, but not the heavy, heavy weeds, basically what you're doing. All right. What is your preferred lens for the relevant glasses? Um, ice fishing, it's going to be that hard water lens. Oh, um, by far. Yep. That'll, that'll be the best one. Griff's been prototyping them. They just released them. If you want a pair, that's the wrong. Deal. Open water, I'd say the freshwater red. And if you want a pair, you can get the uh, you can get any relevant shades for twenty percent off using the code TCC twenty until uh, the end of September. And we will go back through the questions. Um, you could only have five jigs to take fishing. What would you pick? Three drop kicks and two pinhead minnows. Yeah. That's probably honest answer. <laughs> That's a lot of jigs. You don't need five. You only need two. My opinion. Oh, here's here's a great one from Kansas. Want to do a guided fishing trip? Who do you recommend? This man right below me. Riff him. Yeah, Hello. he'll give you your best experience in Minnesota. I will, I will help you yep. catch seafood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reach out to him and you'll have fun. Um, we will announce the winner for the ice rod for the live stream uh, probably tomorrow. I'll probably announce it or reach out to that person. I think we should announce it. Or we could announce it tonight, I guess. Um love that hat griff is wearing yeah you can still get those there's still some of those in stock and if you buy 60 dollars of other merch use the code live stream oh, you free. get that hat full free so full free. Buy, yeah full free uh how do you find irregularity in weeds for crappies is it just a lot of looking yes yes yep. a lot of camera nice. work. no use your camera yeah use a camera drill a lot of holes also use google earth if you can find some images of where the weed edges normally are, uh, you at least have a starting point. You can also find scouting open water in the weeds ball. doing that too. If you can find lanes in the weeds, so think of it as this, these lanes in the weed is like 494. So you got heavy weeds all over and you got these like lighter spots in the middle. Well, those fish will use those as travel paths. You know, so you kind of, it's like a highway where they all kind of funnel through. So if you can find those, just that's, you know, kind of what you want to do. Irregularity is exactly what you're asking. It's good old Matt Lee. What's up, Matt? I didn't know you like crappie fishing, but uh, here he is. It seems like you constantly bring more crappie through the ice than other species. How do you target crappies only? Um, we do catch a lot of other species as well. It's just uh, don't normally show four-inch perch. <laughs> <laughs> Or two inch blue. Or walleye. Guys. Yeah. So or, I don't, we'll show a walleye other, if we catch one. Fish we got one the other night. But uh, yeah, we catch some others, but generally mainly crappies. We're just in the area where crappies want to be. Crappies are also relatively, normally very suspended compared to other species. So you eliminate, eliminate a lot of your bycatch by jigging four to six feet higher. Um, how often do you bring out underwater cameras? Not enough. Yeah, probably not enough. Mainly yeah. around weeds, right, Griff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where you need it. I mean, a lot of times, like, if you're in deeper stuff, it's hard to find what you're looking for in the water column. And in the deeper water, you can't see as well. So, like, in the weeds is what you're looking for. Like, you want to find those weed edges, those channels in the weeds, um, transition where it goes from – there might be a, like a gravel spot in the weeds or something like that, or a sandy spot. And uh, that might be right where those fish are sitting. So, but uh, the one I use is the Markham Recon five. And then a lot of people use the Aqua view. So, I mean, it's kind of each his own. They're all about equally the same. Yeah. Um, Griff, how often how often do you catch white crappies out of Tonka? Depends on what in the lake I fish. If you want white to catch crappies white tend to be around I'll, dirtier water. I will tell you this is the one tip you want to catch a white crappie on Tonka, you better go to the west side of the lake. 
yeah. in the dirty water. You will not catch one in the clean. And if you do, you got lucky. Very lucky. Any mods to your iFish Pros? Um, not any specifically for me personally. Pink, you might have a tip or two. But one thing we do use, we've been using lately, is um, using an Amped Outdoors lithium battery and then an ice defense to uh, keep the hole open when it's really cold so we don't have to constantly check the holes. But do you have any mods or anything? Um, I pretty much run them straight up, whether I'm doing like pike fishing or pan fish or whatever. But the only thing that I do right out of the box is all of the flags like when you open it up the flag will be the open end will be facing straight up i turn it 180 so it's down so it doesn't catch the line on the way up when it fires because sometimes if your line isn't straight down when the flag shoots off it'll grab your line in that v and it'll get sometimes wrapped around i always just turn it the other way so it kind of brushes it off what does it mean when a fish swims off the bottom aggressive to a jig and then darts straight back down it, well, was a, it was a perch. <laughs> it was a perch. It fooled you. Uh, it happens a lot. Um, this is a good question for Pink. Is the catching cook really worth the shipping from Canada? I would say, um, yeah, yes. I mean, the it it sucks that we don't have like a ton of places to get it. We're trying know? to get them in Thorn Brothers. They do have a few U U.S. Uh, distributors now. They have something on their site, but we're working on it. Yeah, they have like they a have one in North Dakota. Okay, so you might be able to get it from somewhere there. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, overall, it's the, the ingredients in them are better than across the board, most of the on-the-shelf, um, different kinds of breadings like that. I think the seasonings are worth it, definitely. Um, I actually been using those like a ton, even not just for this. Uh, but, yeah, it's legit stuff, man. Like, I... I would use it. Uh, I would use it over pretty much any of the other store bought, you know, store stock stuff any day. I would agree. I'll it be- definitely, it definitely tastes better. And if you're going to use it, we do still have a code to get it a bit cheaper. Um, but with that, like they do offer big bulk packs um, where you can get different seasonings or yeah, some of the seasonings. Get some a, of the- yeah, it's like a package where you can get multiple breadings and all the three seasonings together. And I think they have one now that has that knife they came out with, like all in one yeah. like thing. Or yeah, whatever. so you can get a pack that's kind of a bang for your buck. Um, but yeah, definitely try it. I, I, we've been very impressed by it, to be I, honest. I think if you order it and try it, you'll definitely order more. I would say that. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I can tell you, as someone who loves food, it's really freaking good. <laughs> yeah. Good question. What's the deepest depth you'll fish to release them safely, Waldo? Uh, yeah, so it depends on where they're suspended in the water column. If they're 10 to 15 foot down over deep water, that's fine. But if they're like in deep water, meaning like over 30, but if they're glued to the bottom in 30 foot or in that bottom 10 foot in 30 to 40 foot of water, that's when you really – you're, you're going to kill those fish. Those fish are going to, there's two things that'll happen. You'll either burst their air bladder on the inside or uh, you'll rupture their capillaries inside around their head and where all their blood vessels are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty much, it's like, uh, it's almost like a bruise or a, just a, a blood vessel bursting essentially is what it is. And so normally if we're over deep water and we're finding fish glued to the bottom, we're going to leave other places where we're not going to risk killing those fish because we don't want to kill these big fish. We want them to do their thing and reproduce. Um, So that's probably for like deep water. If they're glued to the bottom and 10, 15 foot, you don't really have to worry about it at all. Um, If they're glued to the bottom though, and 30 and 40 foot, that's when you got to make the ethical decision as an angler and a sportsman to not target those fish. All right. Uh, does the clam dead meat have more backbone than Waldo's Chronicle? Uh, no, the clam dead meat is more moderate. Uh, it's a fiberglass rod, right? Waldo? No, it's got, it's about, it's a fiberglass rod, but it's almost the exact same. This one, I, I think it's more moderate. I've used that rod for a dead stick. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You know what? I don't think it has as much backbone. 
No, it doesn't, it doesn't have, have as much immediate backbone. Yeah, it's a bit odd, but it doesn't have as much immediate backbone. And I would say this one is a smoother transfer. Oh, um, absolutely. Yes. From the noodle tip to the backbone, it's definitely a smoother transfer. But you're also comparing a $130 rod to a $40 rod. So there's going to be a lot of differences between rods. So uh, the, it's de the dead meat is definitely a really good bang for your buck rod. Um, but if you want more of the custom style rod or uh, a rod that you can get built exactly to what you want um, and get pretty high end components like recoil guides and wind grips, then you're going to want to go towards a Thorn Brothers rod. Um, but that meat is a good rod. If you're definitely on a budget or just want to get multiple rods at a low price, it's a good one. Um, trying on relevant shades, Waldo, where's some other, um, retailers that have them in print yeah. or, uh, St. Cloud Shields, right? Yeah. Shields. They're starting to pop up in Shields locations. Uh, they got a couple other smaller shops that they're in right now, but, um, they're just starting to get them into stores. So, uh, if you want to see them in your guys' stores, make sure you talk to the employees at that store. Otherwise, if you have your own shop and you are interested in selling relevant sunglasses, uh, get a hold of any of us and we can get you the contact to get that set up. So uh, they're just starting to get out in stores, so you can always go to their website. Uh, but there's more and more locations popping up, I mean, constantly. So uh, yeah. right now, the big store that has them is that St. Cloud Shields. And if you're looking for like a generic relevant um, frame to try out, the Ranger is really good all around um generally like that's that'll fit most people and if you got a wider dome like pinkala um just go straight for the titan just go right to the titan uh, and you know if you have a wider dome that's the thing like you don't have to overthink that you're the person who knows i need wider frame sunglasses and you will get the titan and you'll be happy yep um <clears throat> what gloves do we wear ice fishing waldo the blackfish arid gloves Let's see um while we're, while we're fishing at least oh i think this is actually a really good question this is a new one um not sure if this applies to crappies but how would you guys break a fish's ceiling like if you pull them up off the bottom to a certain depth and they won't go higher. There's say two it. things that I do. I say either... it, yeah, say it, Griff. Say it. What? Do you Down jig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's two things I do. That's Down a phrase of season two, if you guys haven't got it. And it works. It works really it's good. It's it's such a good technique. It's annoying how well it works. Yeah, down jigging and then just pounding it as hard as you can on the spot are pretty much the only two ways you can get a fish to break the ceiling. Well, and I think also knowing what that fish's ceiling is so that you can bring them up to it and then down jig down to them as they're coming up to that ceiling, um, that, that's a very good combo. Well, and I think, finding, I think finding their comfort zone again, you know, let's say they come up three feet and they don't eat, but they go – down back to where they were when you first saw them, that's like their comfort zone. And a lot of times when you're down jigging, when they get back to that same zone they started at, that's when they'll actually bite the down jig. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but a lot of yeah. times like when they come up, raise up to it, and then when they drop back down to where they were and they stop, and then all of a sudden you down jig to them and they, they pop it, even though you've been down jigging the whole time, you know what I mean? All right, uh, we got a really important and good question. I hope Will Stolsky is still here. If he is, I love you, Will. It's been way too long. But um, important question for everyone. Do you think OJ did it? <laughs> oh, yeah. If the gloves don't fit, you got to fit. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Stolsky always oh, coming in with something good. Uh, Daryl, before you go into bed, do you do we ever get in a fight or disagreement? Yes, all the time. Hold on, Waldo and Griff yell at each other pretty often. We had a pretty good. Hold on, was Will Stosky even around? Was he even alive when that happened? 
No. No, it wasn't alive. <laughs> okay, I like just like almost two thousand. I was in high school. <laughs> God, I made an old man joke at you the other night, and you almost punched me, and that was worse than what I referenced in that joke. <laughs> Fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> It was very funny. I'll push all you. Like to look at me. Just... What did you uh, say? He paid for drinks out of his penny jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. Uh, we have re. So there's recoil guides on Griff, Waldo, and Pink Hollows rods. Oh yeah. Minus standard Fujis. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. You can just flicky, flicky. Unless it's really, really cold. Then they just yeah, go. don't do that one. Then they just go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so we've been getting this question a lot. So I'll answer this quick. The what? Do, what do we think about Live Scope? Um, Live Scope is a very good tool. We would not recommend using it for your like all day, every day fishing. Like if you, if you're asking about this in terms of purchasing a live unit, live is really good for like the one percent of people who actually go out and chase fish a lot. It's a search tool and use it as a search tool. But when you find the fish, go back to your Vexlar. The best combo out there is a Vexlar and a Mega Live, uh, Lawrence Active Target, Garmin Live Scope, w- whatever your preferred brand is. Um, that's the best combo. Otherwise, if you don't want to spend two, three thousand dollars on that, just go drill a bunch of holes and use a Vexlar. You all have the same results. Um, swing or get a beam throughout. bender, huh? You can get a beam bender too. We yeah, you know, get a beam bender, bender like stuff like that. So beam bender. It's a very, it's a very good search tool. It's also a really great way to waste a day on the ice fishing. Um, you can get very lost in that. Mm-hmm. Get an underwater camera too. A Vex and a camera would be a sick setup, too. Um, so overnight ice camping episode. We kind of did that. We went out with Lift Bridge last weekend. Pinkala cooked up some really good food. You guys got some dope recipes coming up. Um, and it was actually really nice. Yeah. It was really nice to hang out in a permanent overnight and uh have that experience. We did a 24 hour episode. We didn't even camp because we fished the whole time. Um, but yeah, we've been talking about doing that. We were out until 2 a.m. the other night. We probably should have just stayed there, but we had nothing to actually sleep in and, and a dog. I was not yeah, sleeping out there. Maybe late ice when it gets warm. How many pinheads have you lost to pike this season? Honestly, not very many. I lost one last Four. week. It was 100% my fault. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I should insert we that are. clip into the next video because that was 100% your fault. <laughs> Just a pinhead right in the snoot, and we all and you pulled the line, and we yeah. all saw it. the pike was halfway out of the hole. And we were there; were, all three of us were standing around the hole. We we're like, "Look at that!" And then it broke, and the pike was just sitting there with it, and we just let it slide. Yeah, uh, orange and yellow. Tell you what, um, looks like a perch. She gone. Does Griff ever take his hood off? No, 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 never. It was always cold. Like seeing a ghost. Yep, there it is. I have ears, damn it. <laughs> Griff, do you have any guide trips available? Another person asking. Yeah. Just contact me. We'll talk about it. All right. So I actually caught up on questions. So if anyone has any questions, hit us up. Um, and then we'll yeah, probably call it good for the night. But just a reminder, if you're looking for sunglasses, Relevant shades, you can now get 20% off using code TCC20 until the end of February. We are also fundraising money in a GoFundMe below for uh, Waldo and Pink Hall to replace all their camera gear. If we fundraise over the amount needed for that Amazon order, we'll donate it all to future anglers in Minnesota. So either way, it's going to some great causes. Yes. There's also currently a merch sale going on. Spend sixty dollars on the Crappie Chronicles site, you get a free hat. So uh, put that hat in your cart before you check out. And lastly, if you want a chance to win a uh, ice armor jacket that's signed by all the spit and chicklets, donate in seven dollar increments, and uh, you'll be able to do that. 
<clears throat> and, seven dollars is one ticket, right? Yeah, seven dollars is one yep. ticket. So fourteen dollars, two tickets, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so that's going until the end of the month. We have a meetup at Thorn Brothers next week where you can all check out all the uh all our odds there. So we can answer questions there. You can talk to Pink about cooking and uh Waldo and Griff how to actually catch fish and I'll just kind what of what day is that again? The seventeenth Thursday. Next Thursday, 17th. the seventeenth, five to oh. eight. Okay. Uh, what's everyone's favorite black rifle iced coffee flavor? Ooh, the, Pinkala, <laughs> the big coffee guy. Pinkala yeah. and Griff don't drink coffee, really. So Although, any, you know, any other ones I give to Waldo? Those are the ones I like. I did drink a couple of those canned ones. The caramel thing was pretty legit. The, the 300, 300. Yeah, those are my favorite as well. Yep, the 300 milligram caramels are. I will dope. say, I will say my girlfriend loves them, so. There's that. Yeah, they're absolutely delicious. Um, they give you a ton of energy right away. They wake you up. You don't get that sugar rush or a headache from it. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Pink, how do you – I'm saying do you prefer burbot? Or how do you prepare burbot maybe? Justin's going out fishing with Griff, so he's normally good about asking questions, but this is definitely a typo. Sorry, Justin. Um, we're going to go with how do you prepare a bourbon, huh? Yeah, we'll go with that. That's a better one. Uh, so I would say, um, bourbon's cool because it's kind of like a little bit different type of fish. So, um, you know, if you do any kind of research about them, they're more like in the cod family. Um, so they have, uh, a nice big flake meat in them. Um, kind of interesting, a little bit different, but any, actually anything that I would do with that, I would just not do some type of fried fish because it's, te they tend to have a lot more fat and oil in the meat itself. Um, so I would say if you're going to do something like that, I would definitely be looking more towards like a baked situation. Um, and then let's see. Also, if you do catch a bourbon, use the liver because, uh, cod liver is legit and they're really, really big. Um, also, also favorite plastic for crappie favorite fishing. plastic for crappie fishing. Good question. I think me, you and I both prefer the whammy. Yeah, I use the whammy <clears throat> most of the time. Um, and then I go kind of. I like that the the smaller size Jamie one too is pretty sweet. Griff, what's your favorite? Uh the Mackey Mackey. I mean, I've pounded them on that motor oil. Yep, motor oil Mackey Mackey. <laughs> or white Waldo. Mackie Mackie, Whammy, or Spiky? That wasn't a favorite. That was an RC. Yeah, you're supposed to give one. Well, it's a favorite. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't choose just one, but probably if I had to choose one, I'd always start That's with is all the accessories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, accessories. Yeah. If I was to pick one or at least one that I start with every time, it's a, a Mackie Mackie. You just cut the legs off and make it look like a Jamie. Yeah. Are you guys thinking about a Crappie Chronicles Fish Donkey Tournament? We've actually had a lot of people asking about this. I haven't been thinking about it. Maybe we moderately will think about it. That seems like more work, and we're pretty tired right now. Um, trying to catch an 18 yeah. is a lot of work. If you guys didn't know, we we film probably four or five times a week, and you guys see about half of it. So, Although if somebody comes up with another Fish Donkey Tournament, we might do it. Yeah, if someone comes up with one, <laughs> we'll beat you all. I'll give away the prize. We just again. don't want to run it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we catch an 18, will it even fit through the hole? We're going to find out. Hopefully. It should fit through a seven. Yeah. It should fit it through a seven off. and a half. It's going to get a little tight. We'll make it fit. Might have to give her a little pole ski, but whatever. Six inch, no. Biggest crappies yeah, in the lakes for river backwaters. Both. Both. That's why both. we fish both. That, that's why we fish both. I think your bigger average size is going to be in the river backwaters. Agreed. But uh, both have and you have just as good of an opportunity in both. Top They're, end is the equal. Yeah. Because the thing is, is the lakes where we're catching the really big crappies, are those fish are built just like those river fish. Yeah. So they, they got similar genetics. Uh... Do you adjust jig colors for water clarity and sky conditions? If so, what colors to pick accordingly? 
I think the biggest thing is water clarity. Yeah. Um, right. When it's yeah. dirty water, I use black or gold a lot. Uh, lighter color, go towards white or motor oil. Is that right? Is that what you think, Griff? Yeah, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, going right? to be lighter, <laughs> it's gonna be lighter <laughs> dark, period. No. No. Sorry, no. I was reading, no. I was reading wrong. comments. You're wrong. No, no it's going to be lighter dark, period. I mean, there's you only two options, really. Light, dark. Yeah. Griff and I there's usually really no in between. start with rods that have both on there, and we'll, we'll switch between the two until we figure out what works the best, and then we just roll with it. It, it. it really depends. And Griff and I have also had this happen where it's completely switched, you know, two hours after catching the fish. So, it, I mean, it, you just have oh, to yeah. be able to adjust and make those decisions. So uh, having a good assortment of jig colors is usually the best way to go about it. But I think most of us start off with black, and then we venture from there. With We then go to white. And if that doesn't work, we'll go to some of those more niche colors. But, yeah, I mean, black and white jigs usually get it done 90% of the time for us. And then just have a pocket full of glow stuff. Yep. Keep talking. I'm going to find something. I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were people asking what an 18-inch crappie looks like. So, like that. Yeah, like that. We're going to see if this works. Oh, boy. We better close some of those tabs first. Do you even have a picture of an 18 inch crappie? Do you need some? <laughs> we just took yours. We just took yours. <laughs> ah, you son of a bitch. Griff, how big is that one? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Shh, quiet. <laughs> That one was 18, I think it was 18 and three quarter, 18 and a half. I don't remember. But what was the weight? Yeah. What was the weight? 314. Yeah. Three pounds, 14 ounces or 314? Three pounds, 14 ounces. For everyone asking what we are after. It's literally touching my chest. Like I'm not holding it out. It it looks like I am, but my elbows are bent. It's literally one side of it's touching my chest. Yeah, that, that's, that's what we're looking for. That's what an 18 looks like. Um, yeah, they're out there. So, yeah, for everyone asking what one looks like, every time I look at that picture, I'm just like, what the hell? Look at how big its mouth is compared to its hand. I know. Like Griff, show us, in... show us your hand. Like, just put it up the same way you did. No, that's too close. <laughs> Get it closer to your body? No, this is... Oh, there we go. Um, look yeah, at yeah. it. Well, it's, it's hard so to tell. Big. I'm that looking at a screen this so big, big on my TV. So, yeah, that is uh, that's a, and is yeah. that's a hybrid, right, Griff? Or is that a black? Yeah, it's got, it looks like it has stripes on it, but who knows until it you a hybrid. It's you actually get them think, like the size of the bait those fish could eat. You know, like they're eating those four inch perch like nothing. That's why I always say they don't bite. You know, people are like, oh. You catch them out there. Well, they bite like probably every two days. Right. They get a big meal and done. Yeah. So yeah. So that that is what the um yeah, that's what an 18 will look like. Um good question. Season three, as of right now, would be a hard no. We're all pretty tired, but we'll see what ends up happening. You guys gotta really talk happy to our sponsors. <laughs> um Dude, what's the state record? Is 18 going to be close? I think the state record black's 20 and a half, right? 21. 21? Yeah, and 5-4, but there's the a lot white of is very attainable. Yeah, the white crappie is a pretty attainable one. That's Griff, your dad has two state record whites on his wall, doesn't he? Just one, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> um episode okay episode coming out tomorrow no so next week um it's kind of gonna depend how filming and stuff goes this weekend too but for sure by next thursday if you're lucky next tuesday but for sure next thursday we'll have another episode out we have one filmed we just kind of wanted to wait and get a few more things done uh plan on doing it next year yeah i don't know so <laughs> that's a very honest answer what's up Owen? no clue right now Hard to see the so little. Keep it going into next year. Gosh, you guys, stop it. 
<laughs> um Oh yeah, here we go. All right, we just ran into the comments of showing that picture, Justin. That's a tank. <laughs> okay, and then here's it. Until the moment, I didn't think an A team was possible through the ice. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they exist. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> um, Griff, how big was your one from the Min Pan tournament five years ago? Wasn't that a seventeen? No, it was sixteen and a half. It weighed two eight. White crappie. <laughs> Just another. Oh, we don't need to show that one. <laughs> that one was pretty sweet. 31 uh, feet of, Unfortunately, I killed that thing. Uh, yeah, we'll have more sales at the Thorn event as well. There, there will be discounts there. I know I said it last year, but also we filmed more episodes, and it's later, and we're all really tired right now. Um <laughs> What kind of boat is on the way? I'll I'll let it out of the bag. It's a Camus CX twenty. Um, what do we use for cameras? Uh, Sony A seven three and uh, GoPros sevens and nines, mainly nines now. Yeah, the nines, um, the juice. But yeah, so we just hit two hours. We're probably gonna wrap it up now. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um. Got any wow, final yeah. words you want to say to everybody, Waldo? What was that? You got any final words you want to say to everybody? Mm -hmm. see, uh, you, see them at Thorn <laughs> Brothers next Thursday, maybe? Yeah, see you guys at Thorn next Thursday for our meetup, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, we'll be doing seminars, we'll merch sales. You can check out the rods. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go get some sleep now. And uh, Griff and I have the state championship this weekend. Hey. Everybody wish us luck. Me and oh, other way. Sorry. That guy. <laughs> I, that got me earlier. <laughs> that <too>. guy. <laughs> For the Minnesota State Championship this weekend. Um, I don't think Bart Waldo's even pre fishing. I'm gonna go for like four hours tomorrow. That'll be the only time I'm out there. But hopefully we can win ten grand, you know. At least make it the day two. That'd be pretty sweet. Then you would donate all the money to buy Pinka's camera gear back, right, <laughs> Griff? <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't yeah. into the grip of bank you account. Put in seven dollar increments <laughs> towards that jack. Sorry, buddy. I love you. Uh, just can't my money. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's good. Um, this is another funny comment. So I don't, I don't know who the Min Fats guy is. How many of Griff's <laughs> Giants are from the not undisclosed location? Like I said, a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of people in on one it. location and they're like, I know where that is. And they catch them all there. And that's just not hey. the case. <laughs> um, well, then fats, if you know where they're at, just go catch them, buddy. Yeah. This guy, Cold Spring, he's been commenting like every live stream and every video. I've seen 20 inch fish and my buddy has a 20. I know someone who has a 20 and a half on their wall. Send mm -hmm. the pics, I would. Yeah. I'd love to see the yeah. pics. I, I want to get a 20 as well. I will. Yeah. Doubtful. I know a 20 and a half on the wall. I'm debating going yep. to that lake on Sunday since we have this slide. I've seen two 19 inches. I've never seen it in small, person. But you I know got he five 20 inches on the wall, or your buddy's get, no, it didn't happen. And a half. I can <laughs> show you never where it's from. Them. I can get you the pictures. Soby knows the oh, guy too. Awesome. You know the guy. Probably didn't measure it or his mouth open when you measured it. Didn't pinch the tail. You know, same shape. You yeah, would believe it. 20 and a half, right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I want to see it on the scale, right. then we'll talk. Good luck, good luck. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, we definitely need the luck. We're we're rolling into the best part of the season. Um, we appreciate everyone for tuning along. We're gonna get the series back on the roll here, and um, yeah, and we'll get uh, hopefully get it. <laughs> we're all pretty beat, but uh, yeah, I'm ex I'm excited to get the end of this season rolling. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Late ice is going to be legit. Um, I'm ready to get over this. Says he's missed Denver. all our spots, but one from last year. I'm going to call it big fat lie on that. <laughs> and we could meet at the two mile hike, but there's not 18s there, so we won't. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. So Jim says, "May you catch your 18 during the tourney? If you guys catch an 18 during the tourney with me not there, it's over." It will What's not happen. 
<laughs> Period. Not at that lake. Not anymore. Yeah, there's probably never been an 18 inch of cod in the last 10 years out there. No, nope. yeah. the biggest one I've heard of is 17, and that was th uh, four years ago. <laughs> yeah, if there is, they're gonna kill it. But oh, yeah. uh, all right, Thanks. we will announce the winners of the prizes tomorrow. I'll announce them on my story or comment. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna peace out for the night. Thank you everybody for joining in, and uh, we will have an episode next get Thursday. Merch. Get some merch. Donate to the GoFundMe. Help the guys get their camera gear back. Um, and, yeah, you can get some relevant shades. We'll see you next Thursday at Thorn Brothers from 5 to 8. And uh, we'll have a jolly old time. It's going to be a good one. We will. See you later. Thanks for all the support, guys. Peace out. Bye-bye.